Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We begin with police using deadly force on a man who they say stalked, shot, and killed his ex-girlfriend in a hotel parking lot. There are a number of scenes to this, a number of agencies that are investigating this tonight. Plenty of moving parts, so let's take you through this step by step. This morning, police say the shooter opened fire on his ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend in the parking lot of a hotel on Northwestern Highway. That shooting left the woman dead and the man critically injured. Then, a few hours later on the Lodge service drive at Seven Mile, police stopped the suspect in the case. He was in uh, this convertible when police say he reached for a gun, and that is when officers began shooting. Victor Williams live with more on this, and uh, you just got an update here from police within the past hour, Victor. Oh, yeah. Well, first off, let's just say it was a very busy day for both the Southfield and Detroit police departments with one 40 year old woman unfortunately now being killed and the person who is responsible for doing that to her meeting their fate at the hands of police officers right behind me. It's traumatizing to see, man. I'm telling you, it's really traumatizing to see all that blood. Officers shoot and kill a man allegedly on the run for shooting his ex-girlfriend, along with her new lover earlier in the day at the Detroit Marriott Southfield Hotel at 9.24 a.m. It appears that he waited in the parking lot until they exited the hotel, at which time he used an assault rifle and did shoot both of them. One man wishing not to go on camera saw the aftermath once police caught up to the suspect near the lodge in Seven Mile nearly two hours later around 12 30 p.m. When I looked behind me and I seen five officers standing on top of a black Camaro, a drop top Camaro. About five officers, guns pointed down at him, telling him don't move. And when he was going to lift up his gun, they just fired at him and killed him. Police say the car the suspect was in this time was not the same one that fled the scene of the Marriott Hotel in Southfield and that he switched cars after going to his home in Warren. Once officers caught up with him, his next move seemed like something right out of a Hollywood movie. He lowered the top of the uh, Camaro, at which time our officers tried to engage him. He did reach for that assault rifle. Uh, and officers did use deadly force. Sadly, it's the family members of everyone involved that now have to deal with the aftermath of the tragedy that's taken place. We know what that, an assault rifle could do. Uh, we know what he'd already done uh, to his uh, loved one and her companion. Our hearts, our thoughts go out to those families. Now, the new boyfriend who was shot is now in critical condition in the hospital. Chief Barron just wants this to be an example and warning of how domestic violence is a national crisis. Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Victor. Detroit police say they've arrested a man wanted for shooting three people at a Detroit gas station over the weekend. A shooting happened at a gas station on McNichols near the lodge. Police believe an argument over a $3 refund set the whole thing off. Sean Lay live with this story. Circumstances here are heartbreaking, Sean. Truly, we're talking about a gunman at the glass there at the gas station having an argument with the clerk. Again, he's armed with a gun. People behind him just waiting to pay for their things like a bottle of water. He's angry. He turns around and takes that anger out on them. We have made an arrest in the case. I want to thank our community. They were very helpful in identifying our suspect. Uh, also, uh, we had a lot of tips that came in through Rewards TV. Detroit Police James White making the announcement today that investigators have made an arrest in this weekend's triple shooting at this mobile gas station on McNichols near the lodge at 3 Saturday morning. The chief also making this point that anyone should never have to fear being shot while at any gas station. The three shot Saturday were customers, just innocent victims waiting to pay for their items. When the gunman, furious over $3, took his anger out on the customers around him, shooting three, killing one man in his 30s. It, it really is tragic and senseless violence, gun violence, senseless, senseless gun violence. Uh, three people who had nothing to do with his dispute decided to stop at a store at 3 in the morning to get a pop or whatever they were getting, and he's having a dispute and decided to take it out on those three innocent victims. Just unacceptable. So now you've got three victims, one's dead, and then you've got a person who committed the act who is likely, his life is over as well. He won't see the light of day. Back here live, the chief using one strong word, which is senseless to describe it all. The person arrested is 27 years old police. Devin uh, seeking charges immediately. So Sean, is he on parole? 
Correct. He's on parole at this time. The chief says with a history of violent offenses with an element of mental health challenges, but yet he was still armed with that gun. Yeah. All right, Sean. A man is facing murder charges for a deadly wrong way crash on I-696. Police say Stefano Neighbors was driving drunk early Friday morning when he hit and killed a man on the freeway near I-94 in Roseville. The victim was a 62-year-old man from Harper Woods. Police say Neighbors was going the wrong way in the westbound lanes of I-696. In addition to murder, he's facing charges related to drunk driving. In Allen, Texas, just north of Dallas, the search for answers is underway after the nation's latest deadly mass shooting. Saturday afternoon, a gunman wearing tactical gear opened fire at an outlet mall. Eight people were killed before a police officer confronted him and killed him. Chris Pallone in Allen tonight as investigators zero in on a motive. Chris. It's been nearly two full days since state and local officials have held a news conference to give more information about Saturday's deadly attack. But we are learning more about the eight victims who were killed Saturday and the man who's accused of killing them. In Texas, a memorial continues to grow at the Allen Premium Outlets, the scene of the nation's latest deadly mass shooting. And now, two days later, as the initial shock wears off, families are opening up about those who were killed, among them 27-year-old Ashwarya Thadakonda, a native of India who lived in the area and worked as an engineer, and 20-year-old Christian Lacour, a security guard at the outlet mall. His grandmother called him a beautiful soul. Father God. Sunday night, the community paused to remember the victims, but they're left with so many unanswered questions, including the biggest, why? I heard pop, 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 shooting, and everybody ran. Police say the gunman was 33-year-old Mauricio Garcia. He was armed with a rifle and pistol and had more guns and ammunition in his car. Law enforcement officials tell NBC the massacre is being investigated as a case of racial or ethnically motivated violent extremism. They're combing through social media posts Garcia interacted with, espousing neo-Nazi and white supremacist rhetoric. Investigators were seen searching his Dallas home over the weekend. One of the many heroes from Saturday, former police officer Stephen Spainhauer, who rushed to the mall after a frantic call from his son who was working there. Spainhauer saw the carnage the gunman left behind and helped some of the victims. He says something needs to change. This is not a Democrat thing. It's not a Republican thing. It's an American problem. There have been 202 mass shootings in the U.S. this year. Saturday's was the second deadliest. Seven other people were injured in Saturday's attack. Six of them remain in the hospital. The oldest of those survivors is 61. The youngest, just five. In Allen, Texas, Chris Pallone, Local 4. All right, Chris. Garcia joined the Army in 2008, but lasted just three months before he was uh, terminated. All right, let's turn now to the weather. We've got uh, some clouds moving in from Southfield all the way up to Sault Ste. Marie, too. And we have live pictures there from both places as we wrap up our first day of the work week. Looking nice everywhere. We got to see the sun for part of the day today, too. We did. The weekend, too, because I got those mm -hmm. begonias in the ground. I bet you oh, did. Yeah. Yep, good. <laughs> With a few spots seeing some showers, and that's okay as long as it's not freezing rain or snow <laughs> or yeah, frost. Right. <laughs> Yeah, because you just put a whole lot of pressure on me, Carefully, for, for the next seven days as we wait until after Mother's Day, typically. But we'll talk about that later on in the show. 66 right now in Howell, also in Pontiac, 61 in Adrian. It was a really nice day up until about two hours ago when those clouds started to roll in. And there are a few showers out to our west. Now, I just checked the returns in Ann Arbor. This is not reaching the ground. There's some dry air that it has to overcome. So even though it looks like it's raining on the radar, it is evaporating before it reaches the surface. So dry right now across much of Metro Detroit, but it is raining in Lansing and also a few sprinkles down in Toledo. So as we go through the next couple of hours, we will start to see those showers move into our area. If you're on the east side, you'll get them after the west side because again, as you can see, coming from west to east and it, it won't last very long. Just a couple of quick evening showers, no thunderstorms or anything like that. Temperatures will fall down into the mid 50s by midnight tonight and then tomorrow. No rain. We'll have a few clouds in the morning, but otherwise sunshine through the majority of the day and our high temperature reaches 68, which is exactly where we should be for this time of year. But we're going even warmer than that and we'll talk about a warm up in a few minutes. The best thing to do when we get rain like this to see if it's going to rain in your neighborhood because it is so widely scattered is to download this 4-1 weather app and you put in your neighborhood and it will alert you on your phone that rain is moving in or moving out. 